welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy help define our contemporary world. My guest today is at the heart of the telecom revolution in India. He's been a distinguished civil servant with a long and passionate career devoted to many causes. He has several postgraduate degrees in chemistry and political science and in public administration from Harvard University. He was secretary at the Department of Telecommunication and was last year appointed the head of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. I'm delighted to welcome Sundarpindra Mishra. Thanks. Mishra Ji, the, the, the Telecom uh, the, the Authority, TRI, has this amazing uh, reputation of credibility, of transparency, and have so successfully managed to combine the public interest with the inevitable pressures of private enterprise and industry who inevitably want to maximize profit. It couldn't be an easy task. Let me first, of course, thank you that uh, you have recognized the contribution of TRI. But yes, uh, you know, as an authority, regulatory authority, you have conflicting interests and then you have to optimize the results. One such obviously is the interest of the customer, the subscriber, which I would say is the guiding. It's paramount. Yeah, it's That's paramount. why you exist. Yeah, and we really, th you are very right, our rationale is there because we must be looking after the customers. Uh, but one thing which has helped greatly in achieving this kind of, uh, let's say, result, or in future setting agenda for better results, is the role of technology. Uh, technology here was capable of pushing both the telecom service providers as well as the policy makers and the regulators in a manner that there was some convergence and that convergence was all the time looking at the subscriber, the customer. Yet, in a sense, that you have been able to stay at the cutting edge of technology. Uh, I mean, let's not forget that you know the telecom successes in India have, in some ways, uh, exceeded certainly, say, on, on mobile telephony, say, the United States or several other so-called sort of technologically developed societies. So the achievement has been uh, has been not insignificant. Uh, yet there are sort of you know long uh, roads to to traverse yet. In, in, in sort of layperson's terms, what can we as everyday middle class consumers in cities and villages and towns and, and the rural areas and they're, and they're completely different segments look forward to, say in the next year or two in the foreseeable future? The first thing that we should be really, really achieving is bridging of the rural urban digital divide. Today, as you know, the tele density of the rural areas is 4%, and there are cities. Delhi, for example, is reporting 80 percent tele density. Overall, urban tele density is about 20 percent. So, the first thing we got to achieve, so the next explosion that will take place, the exponential growth will take place, that will be in the rural areas. The second thing that we should really be looking forward to is the, is the broadband, which should be available which for a lay person it should really be in that you should have the benefit of voice, data and video, sources of entertainment and other uh, forms of video uh, from the same, um, let us say, conveyor belt. You know, there is considerable sort of uh, confusion and apprehension about broadband. In fact, the very definition of broadband. I mean, most people sort of uh, think broadband is anything more than you know 64 or 128 kbs. Uh, it actually needs to e exceed 512 kbs. And I, I th even in a city like Delhi, there are very few consumers who are actually, if any, really sort of the everyday consumers who are receiving that kind of broadband data. Uh, there is also confusion because service providers are advertising and saying that offering broadband services and the advertising is misleading because when they say 512 uh, KBS for example including BSNL and, and MTNL that represents the maximum figure what you actually get is a lot less 
Are you aware of this? Are you yes, sort of yes, looking yes. into I'm, this? I'm so and, happy. And, and how come that they're getting away with this? Uh, only yesterday I had a very long <laughs> chat <laughs> and exactly the expressions that you are giving to me and the you are almost, uh, you know, giving out what everybody feels here in the city. But let me first tell you, the official definition of broadband is always on line 256 kbps. It's not 512. But you are right. It should be immediately, without even waiting for a minute, double to 512. In fact, it should go to 2 Mbps. That is how in other parts of the world it is 10 and beyond. So, if we do not get 2 Mbps, there is no hope of getting you know the films and video of the kind. You may perhaps get some uh, clippings, but nothing more. It is true that some of the uh, service providers are saying that if you get 128, you have the facility of broadband. We have warned them. We have clearly told them you are misleading and if you charge for broadband on this particular advertisement and speed, it will be wrong. I had a very long chat yesterday with the topmost functionary of MTNL and I did tell him clearly that you are advertising that you are offering 2 Mbps, while many of the neighboring ilakas here in Delhi, they are mostly complaining to me that look where is 2 Mbps, we are not even getting 512. So, you are right, we need to improve and what we have done, you know unlike the voice for broadband, uh, authority had not regulated quality parameters. That quality parameter got regulated in December of 2006. The first quarterly report up to March of 2007 has just been out and was yesterday released to the press. We have pointed it out that there are shortcomings, but we shall make it. I am I'm not unduly concerned about it because the technology is there. It is just a question of perhaps little human control, contribution and little bit of network problem. If these two things are addressed, we shall achieve it. You have been, uh, you know, rather concerned about sort of, you know, the last mile or the last post delivery system and said, you know, copper wire is really not the only solution. What are some of the solutions that uh, you're, you're looking at that are achievable? Actually, my sort of umbrella question was that, uh, you know, just sort of as, as someone who's uh, fascinated, uh, titillated by technology, what are some of the exciting things uh, that uh, we can look forward to uh, in, in, in the coming months and years? On the broadband, uh, of course, the, uh, the most traditional is the um, copper wire. Now, this was the asset of the incumbent operator BSNL. Though authority did recommend that this last mile should be opened up for others also, but uh, this kind of unbundling has not really succeeded in many parts of the world. So, the government in their wisdom decided, okay, let us not waste time on this because even if all the copper wire, you know, is exploited, the total number will be 5 million. Now, if you have to achieve 20 million in 2010, where is that 15 million coming from? And that is your question. I think that 15 million is going to come from the wireless broadband wireless access technology WiMAX will be one of them mm -hmm. they today are very very strong contender for this explain to our viewers in simple terms what is WiMAX <laughs> <laughs> well uh, you know the WiMAX basically the last mile is on totally uh, it goes on a wireless there is no wire as such in the technology which is going but it is the back hall is still connected to the <laughs> optical fiber and it has a much wider coverage of 10 to 20 kilometers in terms of uh, what it can provide for it but little bit of disadvantage in that is that it only gives you data so as a facility ys is not today available it will be available 6 months down the line mm -hmm. so the other technology which is again a very exciting one is that if you went for 3G technology and in 3G again these three data, uh, your uh, video and voice. What is 3G? 3G is, third is, generation? The, is the third generation mm -hmm. technology which mm -hmm. is uh, beyond the voice. We will come to more of that in a moment. You are watching a conversation with the chairman of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, Mr. Nependra Mishra. We will be right back after a short break. Don't go away.
आ गया तो कैसी है तेरी नई स्प्लेंडर एन एक्स जी स्प्लेंडरफुल स्प्लेंडरफुल माने सोच कॉलेज का पहला दिन थक थक पटाखा इन पिंक थक थक हॉट फेस वॉर अ फेस आई कॉन्टैक्ट हार्ट अटैक हाय कैसा लगा ब्यूटिफुल बस सोच रोला कोस्टर Jack and Jill went up the hill. What a thrill! Smooth ride, good on side. Ab bol kya sa laga? Wonderful. Bas, ye le. Stylefull, comfortful, barosa full. Mane? Splendorful. Naya style, zyada comfort, same hero Honda Barosa. Nayi Splendor NXG. Mane? The Splendorful bike. Ignore mat kijiye roj ka tension. मुसीबत को कहे देते हैं इनविटेशन एक रुपए में छोटा नवरत्न तेल लीजिए टेंशन को पेंशन दीजिए नवरत्न तेल रोज का सरदर थकान और टेंशन हटाए ठंडा ठंडा कूल कूल बनाए Welcome back to a continuing conversation with the chairperson of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India. Uh, in terms of the, the, you know, the kinds of things that we will be able to do, uh, you know, with the internet, with the mobile phones, we've already seen in Delhi that you can get Doordarshan signals, you can get Doordarshan live on your cell phone. Excite us a little bit. What are the kind of things that you feel we're going to be able to do with technology in the foreseeable future? Well, the first thing will be that you don't have to go to office. <laughs> so will you that keep you <laughs> home too? <laughs> <laughs> so you may be working all your hours at home, may not be liked uh -huh. by other members uh -huh. of the family, uh -huh. but that is very possible. Uh -huh. But returning to the kind of things which are possible, mm -hmm. uh, you can easily expect that your monetary transactions will take place through your handset, which means that it is almost a mobile bank or a valley, if you want to call it. You will definitely have all the entertainment which will be available to you. So you can ask for a program and get it. Uh, even the government can perhaps have various programs uh, relating to e-medicine or e-governance or any form, you know, which will be available on this. Plus, of course, email will be the very, very primitive first privilege which will be available because data is going to be. Mm -hmm. Even today, millions of people are using their handset for the purposes of email. Mm -hmm. So, and voice, of course, mm -hmm. will be very common. But I suppose the greatest benefit will be mm -hmm. to the rural areas where at this point of time, they are not easily connected with the agricultural market. Mm -hmm. They are not connected with the hospital. Mm -hmm. They are not connected with the educational system mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of this it would be possible for them mm -hmm. sitting somewhere mm -hmm. and ta talking. The other day I saw the one of the presentations where the dentist was giving instructions mm -hmm. to a rural family mm -hmm. that how what is wrong with their denture and what kind of mm -hmm. treatment is required. Isn't that sort of two concerns there uh, that you know, while uh, you know your role is an enabling one and you will create the systems processes and, and access to technology reasonably priced and, and deliverable but ultimately you know we are looking at a rural sector that is, is struggling with basic issues of um, you know electricity power uh, the ability to be able to simulate and use this technology, to be able to set up the computers and the systems that will be able to work with these. And I think the other crisis you know, perhaps will be that uh, you know, the telemedicine and the elements, the content that will need to be transmitted and exchanged over this process probably doesn't exist. So isn't there a fear that while there will be this, this technological possibility, but the capacity of the, the rural economy, the rural infrastructure to utilize this, and this is not really your domain, <laughs> is unlikely <laughs> to happen. Oh, I, I fully agree <laughs> with you that there is a bit of an income divide also which will get reflected through this advancement. And there will be a huge number which in spite of the fact that the access may be available, may not be using it. Obvious reason is you can create information for 
uh, agriculture markets, but if you do not have marketable surplus, what use that is to you. But I think in a country such as India, growth process is not always sequential. You will have development, you will have modernization and you will have gradual ladder people climbing up on that. But your second part is a real challenge. When you said that the progress in broadband and let us say overall internet and all is not all that satisfactory as voice, I think the second part, the content development is missing, totally missing. And of the troika, if you have the access, if you do not have the content or if you do not have consumer premises equipment like computer and all, obviously the troika will not work. Now, in India, not only the content, but the language of the content, the relevancy of the content is equally important. I think that is the area where we need to address and I would perhaps feel that this will be better resolved by some degree of governmental intervention mm -hmm. rather than leaving totally to the private sector for development. They would develop, mm -hmm. but that would be commercially oriented, mm -hmm. little more is required. You know, this, there is the unfolding uh, broadcasting bill and, and considerable discussion and debate uh, on, uh, on, on several issues, not just of content, but in some ways a sort of an implicit rivalry between the bureaucracy of the, uh, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting and that of telecommunication as to who gets to, to manage uh, the, uh, the carriage uh, issues. Uh, of course, you know, the content issues become the preserve of, of, of the, uh, the, the, the broadcasting regulatory authority That's right. that is envisaged. What is your case? What do you see as, as the relationship and the balance and, and how, do you, how would you like to see the working of the telecom regulatory authority and the broadcast regulatory authority and what might be the marriage of the relationship between the two? Let me first tell you that we got to learn from other countries because if they have implemented, there must have been some reason. I think all over the world, all over the world, the convergence of carriage, which means the technological convergence is with one regulatory authority. The content, many countries, America even content is with the regulator of the federal communication uh, regulator. But let us say for a moment that I feel that content should be the domain of uh, a regulator independently appointed by the broadcasting. But the case for not removing carriage is because of the convergence of technology. Mm -hmm. Today you cannot say that IPTV is a broadcasting sector. Mm -hmm. You perhaps cannot say also that it is only telecom sector mm -hmm. because you got to have uh, you know the licensing provisions other mm -hmm. things they are common mobile TV is the other area. many more technologies will come and mm -hmm. perhaps the common service providers will be there for both of them mm -hmm. I mean look at the cable operators today are wanting a license for voice telephony mm -hmm. they are providing broadband already so I would say that taking away carriage mm -hmm. may result in a retrograde step mm -hmm. it may also encourage conflicting mm -hmm. regulations mm -hmm. and more litigation than what we could have ever thought of. I mean, at this stage, mm -hmm. fortunately, we have crossed that hurdle mm -hmm. and there is much better coordination. Mm -hmm. So, uh, our plea would be <laughs> that <laughs> it should be on those lines. Yeah. Yeah. You are watching a conversation with the chairperson of the uh, Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, Mr. Andrependra Mishra. We will be right back after a short break. Do not go away. सोचो तो SBI ने इस एक्यूजेशन को इतना आसान बना दिया है। Morning. Ah, oh, welcome, my friend. This way. हम 32 देशों में अपने 84 ऑफिसों का जिक्र कर सकते हैं। Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our new business partners. मगर आपका सर्वाधिक भसीमन ग्लोबल बैंक होना हमारे लिए ज़्यादा मायने रखता है। भारतीय स्टेट बैंक, सिर्फ बैंकिंग और कुछ नहीं। अपने सर पर योगी राज का हाथ है। अब सिर दर्द, टेंशन, थकान की बंद कर दो दुकान। चौदह जड़ी बूटियों का वरदान। योगी राज आयुर्वेदिक ठंडा तेल। हर बंदा झट से ठंडा। वैस मॉल योगी राज ठंडा तेल।
Welcome back to a continuing conversation with uh, Nirpendra Mishra, chairperson of the Telecom Regulatory Authority and the catalyst, in a sense, uh, for much of the telecom revolution that we see in India. Um, one of the issues that we don't see in, 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 in the unfolding of uh, you know, what you're doing with the Telecom Regulatory Authority is really the community's access to bandwidth. Uh, which is so essential for the processes of democracy. Because if the players are going to be either private industry mm -hmm. or going to be the state, the citizen and, and their capacity and ability to communicate and share information is severely compromised and diminished in what is essentially an electronic age. You know, you had a consultation paper out uh, quoting the Supreme Court and saying that, look, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the citizen's right to information and to exchange and, and a flow of ideas uh, should not be limited to the monopoly of Doodarshan and, and are other private industry players uh, um, interested in this? Uh, we don't quite know what has happened to that. Presumably there was a, wasn't that much interest from industry. But what about citizens groups, you know, the voluntary sector, uh, uh, communities, uh, educational institutions? Have you considered making some bandwidth available to them? Um, you know, frankly, not yet, mm -hmm. and it is perhaps, uh, I would uh, confess, is coming from the fact that there is not enough pressure on this side mm -hmm. of, I mean, I, I must confess, and we, we have not really thought, but you are very right that we got to have a separate niche mm -hmm. for this class of, uh, let's say, the public uh, broadcasting domain, or mm -hmm. the citizens having the right. Mm -hmm. Now, one part of it is likely to um, get addressed when we bring down the, you know, the bandwidth prices. Mm -hmm. The part of it will also get addressed in some manner if last mile links are permitted mm -hmm. to any agency mm -hmm. which does not have mm -hmm. the resource to put the entire gamut entire line of mm -hmm. the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. So, they must be able to light up mm -hmm. and there is enough dark bandwidth available. Mm -hmm. Believe me, the utilization of bandwidth today is not more than 25 percent. Mm -hmm. So, it is not that the resource is not available. I think both here, the, the inadequacy if you may call it, is both from the point of view of user mm -hmm. as well as some regulatory gaps. Because there I is a gap. Mm -hmm. Because I should also suggest that uh, in, in, in several countries, the United States, Canada, Holland, for example, that it is not just providing bandwidth in a passive kind of way, but uh, a, an obligation uh, for people uh, who lay cables or, 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 or DTH systems and operators to make available a certain percentage, a small percentage, mm -hmm. albeit, mm -hmm. uh, for community access. So here is a public plea <laughs> for this kind of uh, uh, concept uh, you know, to, be, to be considered by the Telecom Regulatory Authority, really on behalf of public television, and we are on, 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 on the agenda of public television. You have a very strong case. Um, I, think, I think the other issue that you have been lobbying intensively for uh, is for, great, for more teeth uh, for the Telecom Regulatory Authority, and, and perhaps embarrassing for you to talk about it, but quite legitimately, you know, a longer term for the chairperson that, you know, three years just sort of, you know, whiz by <laughs> and you need, uh, you know, more time to, to consolidate and, 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 and make the kind of impact that a sustained leadership can. What are some of the specific elements uh, that, that, that you're seeking? Let me first explain. Our suggestion for legal amendments are mainly in the domain of technology and enforcement. Um, this was, of course, the tenure issue, but I don't think this is the uh, core, core issue. Uh, issue for us. The first issue was interconnection. Mm -hmm. If I cannot enforce interconnection, the quality of service would be a major casualty. It's been interconnection between different yeah, service different providers. Service providers. Yes. And you cannot be thinking of either the infrastructure of any form that there will be parallel growth of infrastructure. I mean the, you can imagine the what kind of ex investment is required. There, unf I would say unfortunately, mm -hmm. uh, the present interpretation by the appellate courts and TD said in particular is that it is a commercial relationship between the service providers or amongst the service providers. Uh, we are of the view that no, there should be an authority 
that if the commercial negotiations fail, then that is imposed. In fact, uh, that uh, principle has been accepted on the broadcasting side. Mm -hmm. We have a standard reference interconnect Correct. offer that we do not reach an agreement between Correct. the broadcaster and MSO, please go to this Correct. interconnect offer. Correct. That matter is now in the Supreme Court, but we wanted that if the amendment takes place, perhaps that ambiguity will go away. Mm -hmm. The second was the enforcement domain in terms of certain teeth, penal provision. Now, you will be surprised to know today what is the penal provision. Mm -hmm. First thing is that the uh, act says you will not hear individual grievances. Mm -hmm. So, there is I get on an average 200 letters every day. It is a pain in my heart mm -hmm. that I cannot be telling those complainants, consumers that look under the act I will not therefore, I am throwing away your letter. Mm -hmm. So, I have to find ways and means to intervene in their complaints mm -hmm. and we now say no. It is a generic systemic complaint, it is not an individual complaint, we shall intervene. So, that is the kind of a thing. The second problem is, if I have to, uh, let us say, uh, use a stick, not carrot, there are just two provisions. One, I can write to the licensor that look such and such has violated, please take action as you wish, or I go and file one report in the police station mm -hmm. and it will be heard by judicial magistrate at some point of time. Right. Now, you cannot be doing this. I mm will -hmm. take one example, mm -hmm. how we came round this problem very recently 15 days back. Mm -hmm. When we regulated unsolicited commercial mm -hmm. messages, mm -hmm. which is going to be effective from first week September, mm -hmm. we are running at mm -hmm. this point, mm -hmm. you know, the entire uh, let us say experimental mm -hmm. uh, work is going on. Then the issue was what happens if the telemarketer in spite of your regulation is still continues with telemarketing to those who have opted for do not call registry. What does the consumer yeah, do? What mm -hmm. does the consumer do? I cannot say please go to the consumer court. Mm -hmm. Now, what do I do? I cannot punish the telemarketer. Mm -hmm. So, I have now imposed a tariff. Mm -hmm. So, same penalty has been renamed as tariff mm -hmm. and there will be a tariff of 500 rupees per call if the telemarketer violates this. Now, this is the handicap I have. If I had powers of penalty, I would have said the fellow will have, uh, will be penalized by 10,000 rupees. Well, you have just pressed on a button of major concern to, to, our, to <laughs> viewers and, 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 and users of uh, cell phones. So, if this happens, who do they complain to? Now, at this point of time, our regulation is very clear. Mm -hmm. If I am in the do not call registry mm -hmm. and if I still get a call, I immediately go to my telecom service provider mm -hmm. and give a complaint, look, I have got this call, this is the number. Mm -hmm. The telecom service provider checks it with the registration of the telemarketer, mm -hmm. because if some individual prank call is there, he cannot do anything. But let us say he is the registered telemarketer, he immediately, if he that fellow is on his net, he puts a bill of 500 rupees on that call alone. Mm -hmm. If he is on any other net, let us say it has come from Hutch via Airtel to the subscriber of mm -hmm. Airtel, Hutch will bill 500 rupees. Mm -hmm. The second part which you would ask and let me therefore answer that compensation going to this consumer is still not there because legally I could not do it. You have set uh, numerous targets for yourself and, and for the telecom uh, regulatory authority for number of uh, subscribers, for penetration, for uh, how many internet uh, subscribers there will be, etc., etc. But what is your, your, your vision, your dream? As an IAS officer, you have worked through the system, you have worked in districts, you have been, uh, you know, principal secretary to the chief minister in, in UP, you have had so much exposure. What would you like to see all this doing for the people of India? Applied. Oh, <laughs> straight away, you know the number, uh -huh. the number which is said today is that the telecom expansion provides 2 percent to the growth of GDP is my dream. I should really be looking at by which it creates employment. I should be looking at by which it creates economic efficiency in performance. So, if you really asked me in those kinds of terms, I am looking for economic efficiency. I am looking for productive efficiency in terms of farmers and everybody here in the, you know, the rural and urban citizenry. And of course, a certain degree of what is called uh, communication leading to 
social amity in some manner, uh, which is possible, which is greatly possible if people are able to share their thoughts, views, they are able to see each other through the clippings, etc., and talk to each other. Sir, so, thank you very much. Thank this you. has been a great pleasure and a wonderful learning thank experience. You. Thank you, sir, thank for creating time and being here.